was. What happened? You know, there's it has well, there's been an ignorance really to to be honest with you, and we have to also be reminded that it seems like whenever something happens in the earth, you know, especially when Israel's involved, that for whatever reason Israel becomes the scapegoat becomes the blame. Now, that's not to say that Israel doesn't have fault and Israel uh, has, you know, not always done everything correct. But the the key is because God is connected to Israel, they often get the blame for things, and we must keep that in mind. But to uh, the, the pastor's point, we have to remember something. David was a young warrior that came in his generation, and he came out to a war that was happening, and there was a Goliath that was speaking very bold and, and, and continually for 40 days nonstop with great fear that the whole nation was paralyzed. And it was a young man, David, that fought for his God and fought for his country. But here's what David had to do. He had to leave the sheepfold. And I'm telling you, there's a younger generation that's going to have to leave the mindset of a lot of these woke churches, these user-friendly uh, churches, these pastors that won't speak out and do things if they're really going to stand for God in their country. And the other thing that happened is when he did finally go out, he got blamed by his elder brother, the spirit of the elder brother on the church, where he told uh, David, Eliab, you go back to the sheepfold. It's all about the sheep. Don't get involved in politics. And that's really the spirit that has been among many uh, today. But I I believe this. There's a young generation rising as well as an older generation of the Joshua Caleb spirit that is not only going to fight for Israel, but fight with God and see this earth have a global reset and a reversal that God can bring a great awakening to give Jesus the harvest that he deserves. Amen. Hey, Pastor wow. Hank, you hear what Lance is saying? It's an interesting viewpoint. You agree with that? Well, yeah, I agree with having strong leadership. You know, I was thinking about the scripture in the book of Judges. I think it's 24, 25, where it says that where there was no king uh, in Israel, the people did what was right in their own eyes. And when there's no strong leader in a nation, then there are going to be enemies that will rise up and test and see how much they can get by with. So at this time, what we need to do to Lance's point so that we don't see things escalate to a place that is beyond where we need to be or preempt something that the enemy would love to see happen in the earth. We, the people of God, the remnant must come and we must enter into a place of heavy spiritual warfare. We cannot forget that this also is a spiritual battle and we have an authority on the earth. The Bible says when two or more of us agree as touching any one thing upon the earth, it's given to us by our Father in heaven. It also says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000. What? can be done if we the people will quit bickering and fighting against each other and begin to unify and say, God, there is godlessness that we are seeing and it's coming from leaders, it's coming from people, it's coming from our country, but we stand in your face, God, and we are asking for your hand of restraint and we're asking for your mercy to come over the nations of the earth. I think we're going to continue to see the hand of God intervene in a great way if we will continue to do so and we will also see the Lord intervene where he needs to intervene, bringing great restraint and not allowing the enemy to preempt something at this time. Before we go to break, give you a final comment on this topic. Well, and, and you know, I wonder, Gene, to what degree uh, we could uh, speculate that the reason why the America military is exercising such, such strong restraint is they're trying to assess how many of the 62,000 of the 2 million that got in, 62,000 persons of interest, which are terror-related people that are in America and around America, how many of them are waiting for American hostilities to become more orchestrated with Iran so that they could do disruptive damage in the United States? We should be praying vigorously for what has come through our own border, because we are so linked to Israel. Wouldn't it be something ironic and almost believable that they suffered an intelligence failure and that we suffered an intelligence failure because their border wasn't as secure as they thought? Doesn't take a lot of imagination to see that we probably had sleeper cell, militant cells in the United States waiting for the signal to shock America. Well, but we're going to pray against that and stand and be alert and vigilant. No, and in search of the silver lining on this, this um, traumatizing subject, what is good about this, Gene, is that the American campus elites like at Harvard that are demonstrating their solidarity with Hamas are revealing their absolute imbecility 
in a way that the West can see objectively. You know, we, we, didn't, we got confused over BLM. We got churches with, you know, Black Lives Matter flags. I didn't even realize it's a Marxist organization that's against um, Christian marriage. Or, it's, or they're, they're sympathetic to the PLO because they've been taught that in school. But when you hear and see the actual story, truth is so clearly on the side of the real victims in this that for the first time, I mean, in, get this, today, Gene, in Europe, um, the, uh, one, the, one of the parties in Germany is now talking about removing the, what they mean is the Muslim extremists, removing, stopping the um, immigration legally and illegally of foreigners. They're worried about what's coming in Macron today said the unthinkable, the progressive French. He said, even if it's perceived as a human rights violation, we're going to maybe have to export people that don't belong here. What other countries know in their intelligence community is that the radical Hamas-type extremists that are in their countries are trigger-ready for uprising and violence, and it's incompatible with civilization to have that phenomena. And I think you're going to start seeing the campus uh, left-wing uh, students embarrassed by the discovery of what Israel now has to reveal to the West about what the nature of atrocity really is. Rick, let me, uh, Pastor Hank, your thoughts? Well, I want to say this to those of you that I could feel the fear coming as you're hearing different things. There's two things we've got to remember. We've got to remind God of what he has said in his word and what he has said prophetically. But we also have to go back to something, Psalm 121 shows us a God concerning Israel and concerning our nation, concerning your life. He's a God that does not sleep or slumber, but he is the God of preservation. And we need to understand the power of our prayers. Pastor Gene, I have sat with Vietnam vets. I've sat with World War II vets and so on. And you know what they say to me? They say, I'm here today because somebody prayed for me. Never underestimate the power of your prayer, the power of God's word when you speak it and you declare it by faith. Lastly, I want to say this. Abraham had an opportunity to see the mercy of God come to Sodom and Gomorrah when they didn't deserve it. And rather than have faith in the mercy of God, he had more faith in the fact that God would have to judge it because there was not enough righteous people. You make a difference. You right there that's watching your prayers, you speaking the word of faith, God's word, you make the difference to bring something that is so great that even it restrains the Antichrist. It's called the spirit of the living God. And we may have open borders. We may have fighting and things going on in the earth, but my trust is not in horses and chariots, but in the name of the Lord that has the power to restrain. And I am standing before the face of God like Moses saying, you will remember your covenant. You will bless this nation. You will bless Israel and you will restrain the hand of the enemy, God, and you'll drown them in the sea like you did with Pharaoh and his army. I believe it's time for God to arise and his enemies to scatter. And that's what I'm going to continue to stand for. And I'm challenging you, Flashpoint, to do the same. Lastly, Pastor Gene, Lord of Host Church is going to donate significantly to uh, Victor. And I'm challenging the Flashpoint Army to do the same for those children and for yeah. Israel as well. Amen. All right, Lance. Amen. Uh, I want to uh, I want to give you a chance to comment on that, but before you do, we're going to speaking of the fear that is so easy for us to give into, is we've got a free download.